those who are connected online, we are greeting each one of you. As I can see, there are almost 50 something connection online right now as we are speaking. So we are greeting and welcoming each one of you wherever you are in the precious and the powerful name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Shall we stand for the word of prayer? <clears throat> precious Heavenly Father, you are the great God, the God who is, who was, is, and will be forever God. Father, we come in thy presence this morning under that precious blood which was shed on the cross of Calvary. We just surrender everything unto thee this day. Believing and trusting, Father, that you will be the only one using us this day for thy precious word to be spread all over the earth. Father, without you, we are nothing. You are the one who chose us. Please come and use each one of us as we be standing here in this people, destroy us and do the rest. You know the heart desire of each one of us, wherever we are, the challenges that we are going through all over the earth. We know with thee we are more than overcomers. We believe it and trust it and trust you. As we are gathering in this fashion for the preparation, for our preparation, so that we should be worthy to be taken when you come, Father, rebuke us, exhort us, correct us, encourage us for the glory of Jesus Christ. We have prayed. Amen. Amen. Shall we sit? As we are mentioning, Yes, a lot of connections, a lot of greetings from uh, all over the earth, starting from Canada, USA, you go to Europe, Asia, Africa, Australia. Yes, we are greeting everyone in the precious and powerful name of Jesus Christ. And uh, I'm having also a good news is that uh, our precious brother, us is doing very very well and uh, when I saw him on Friday I was just praising the Lord yes shall we start with uh, our songs from our song books song number 37 how great that song number 37 37 Oh Lord my God when I am someone consider all the world and me I see the stars I hear the rolling thunder that far throughout the universe then sings my soul, my Savior, God to thee. I pray that, I pray that. Then sings my soul, my Savior, God to thee. I pray that. From lofty mountain ground, and hear the wood and feel the gentle breeze. 
Then sings my soul, my Savior, go to thee. I breathe the I breathe the Then sings my soul, my Savior, go to thee. I breathe the Sent him to die, as guests can take it in. That on the cross, my burden gladly bearing, he bled and died to take away my sin. Then sings my soul, my Savior, go to thee. Agreed, agreed. Then sings my soul, my Savior, go to thee. I agree, I When Christ shall come, we shout of acclamation and take me home, for joy shall fill my heart. Then I shall bow in arms. And they proclaim, my God, I breathe Then sing, my soul, my Savior, go to thee. I breathe I breathe Then sing, my soul, my Savior, go to thee. I breathe We shall sing from our song books 177, 177. Give me a response. 177. <clears throat> it's so not to die for his holy ghost plan. Old John the Baptist. He died like a man. Then came the Lord Jesus. They crucified him. He told that the Spirit would save men from sin. In stripping with blood, yes, it is blood. This Holy Ghost gospel is dripping with blood. The blood of disciples who died for the truth. This Holy Ghost gospel is dripping with blood. The was when I and John the Divine. They gathered the lost. So did this gospel to shine. They made their blood like the prophet of old, so the true word of God could all honestly be told. He's dripping with blood, yes, he's dripping with blood. This Holy Ghost gospel is dripping with blood. The blood of disciples who died for the truth. This Holy Ghost gospel is dripping with blood. Yes, I must have Stephen, he must have seen. He made them so angry, they dashed his head in. But he gave the Spirit and gave up the ghost and went to join others. In the lovely meadows, he's dripping with blood. Yes, he's dripping with blood. His holy ghost gospel is dripping with blood. The blood of disciples who died for the truth. This holy ghost gospel is dripping with blood. 
Now shall we sing song number 176 from the same song book, The Love of God, song 176. The love of God is greater far than tongue of pain can never tell. It goes beyond the highest star and reaches to the lowest hell. They give TP, but done with care. God gave his son to win. His hearing child, hearing concern, and pardon from his sin. Oh, 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 love of God, how rich and pure, how measureless and strong. He shall for it and all enjoy the saint angel song. When all it shall pass away and earthly thrones and kingdoms fall. When men who yell refuse to pray. On rocks and deep and mountains come, God's love so sure shall still endure. All men shall last and strong, redeeming grace to Adam raise the center and chairs. Apologies to all the brethren. Last Sunday, of course, those who were connected on YouTube, uh, just after when Brother Steve uh, gave the word of exhortation, when I came in, the sound was completely gone. Yeah, so the brethren were obliged not to switch from YouTube to Facebook. Yeah, so then uh, my sons had to change now to take the Facebook and uh, put it on YouTube. You will see today we don't have the mic with us. We have a small challenge, so we are busy trying to put everything in the new laptop. So the Lord willing, if everything goes well, by next Sunday we shall also go to YouTube as well. Shall we sing song, I mean the chorus, song 154 and 153? 
I know it was the blood, I know it was the blood, I know it was the blood for me, for me. One day when I was lost, he died upon the cross, I know it was the blood for me. I know it was the blood, I know it it was the blood, I know it was the blood for me, for me. One day when I was lost, he died upon the cross. I know it was the blood for me. Is everything, is everything to me, is everything, is everything to me. For is my father, my mother, my sister, and my brother is everything to me. I will ask my precious brother Steve to come as we continue to sing this one. Is everything, is everything to me? Is everything, is everything to me? For is my father. Keep the upstanding for the day's bread of exaltation. And today the word comes from the book of Psalms, chapters 25, verses 8 to 14. Verse 8. Good and upright is the Lord, therefore will he teach sinners in the way. Amen. Verse 9. The meek will he guide in judgment, and the meek he will teach his way. Amen. Verse 10. All the paths of the Lord are mercy and truth unto such as keep his covenant and his testimonies. Amen. Verse 11. For thy name's sake, O Lord, pardon my iniquities, yes. for it is great. Amen. Well, what man is he that fears the Lord? He should teach in the way that he shall choose. Amen. Amen. 13. His soul shall dwell at ease, and his seed shall inherit the earth. Amen. 14. The secret of the Lord is with them that fear him, Amen. and he will show them his covenant. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. Yes. Eleven. For thy name's sake, O Lord, partly of thy iniquities. Yes. Goes to Psalms thirty-one three. Yes. For thou art my rock and my fortress; therefore, for thy name's sake, lead me and guide me. Amen. Amen. Verse twelve. He shall teach, him shall he teach in the way that he shall choose. Same Psalms 37, 23. Yes. The steps of the good man are ordered by the Lord and he delights in his way. Amen. Amen. Verse 13. His soul shall dwell at ease. Proverbs 19.23 The fear of the Lord tenders to life. And he that has it shall abide satisfied and he shall not be visited by evil. Yes. Amen. And in the same verse, his seed shall inherit the earth, which we now turn to the New Testament with Matthew 
where our Lord himself says, Blessed are the meek, for they shall inherit the earth. Amen. Amen. This, yeah, this was 14. We now go to John, and he gave the New Testament. Verse 16. Jesus answered them and said, My doctrine is not mine, yes. but is his that sent me. Um, 17. Yes. If any man will do his will, he yes. shall know of the doctrine. Yes. Whether it is be of God or whether I speak of myself. Amen. Yes. Amen. It is written that Jesus says, Amen. I am the truth, the way and the light. Amen. No man cometh to me to the Father yes. except Amen. through me. Amen. Praise be to God. Is everything is everything to me. Is everything is everything to me for is my father, my mother, my sister and my brother is everything to me. Precious brothers and sisters, we are blessed by the word of exhortation as the brother was reading from the book of Psalms 25. You know, oh my, I should start from uh, verse 1, you know, Psalms 25. Where the Bible says, Unto thee, O Lord, do I lift my soul. O my God, I trust in thee. Let me not be ashamed. Let not my enemies triumph over me. Yea, let none that wait on thee be ashamed. Listen, brothers and sisters, when we trust this Lord, our Lord Jesus Christ, I've, I've never seen a single one who put his trust in the Lord to be disappointed. It has never happened in the Bible. And our God, even our Lord Jesus Christ, is a responsible God. Listen, I will continue. Let them be ashamed which transgress without cause. Show me thy ways, O Lord. Teach me thy path. Moses, when he met the Lord, it was also his prayer. Listen, brothers and sisters, you know when we read, there are so many scriptures, you know, when we have to go and read, you will just see that uh, our Lord is just a wonderful God. Oh my. You know, I would like to stick on uh, yes. Verse 5. Lead me in thy truth. The Lord Jesus Christ could say, we shall know the truth and the truth shall set us free. All these people in their denominations, they don't, they don't know the truth. Therefore, they are slaves. And the truth is nothing else but the Bible. Listen, brothers and sisters, that's why the Lord Jesus Christ now is saying in Matthew chapter 11, verse 28, Come unto me. Listen, brethren, there is no salvation in any church. This denomination that you see left and right, there is no salvation there. Salvation is in Jesus Christ. You must meet Jesus. 
And of course, when you meet him, you must have personal experiences with him. Can you imagine? He's our father. Yes, he's our heavenly father. Now, who is that son? Who is that daughter? Who has never met his dad? You may say, yes, when I was born, I was an orphan to some. But at least you must know your dad. And our dad is not a dead one, he is alive. He's the one who said, Where two or three are gathered in my name, I'm in their midst. So we must trust him. And when we put trust upon him, we won't be ashamed. That is a guarantee. That is, thus saith the Lord. Listen, brethren, when we continue, may God bless you, brother. Lead me in thy truth. Not in the truth of any church. Listen, for, for instance, right now we have almost 380 or almost 400 different denominations. Each one of these denominations has its own truth. Let me put it like that. Its own doctrine. But I'm telling you, the Bible is open before me. All of them are wrong. Because there is one truth. There is one way. And that truth, that way, is Jesus Christ. If you have never met Jesus, I'm telling you, you must do it now before it is too late. When we continue, oh my. Lead me in thy truth and teach me. Who teaches? is Jesus Christ. That's why when he said, he promised the Holy Spirit, I will send unto you the Holy Spirit and the Holy Spirit should teach us. The Holy Spirit is a teacher. So if we believe that we have one teacher, we can't have so many denominations. Even within the message of the hour, we can't have different directions. No, no and no. If we have one Holy Spirit, we must have one direction. Listen, show me thy way. Okay. For thou art the God of my salvation on thee. Do I wait all the day? Oh my. You know, when you come, brethren, it's just wonderful. Verse 7. Remember not the sins of my youth, nor my transgressions. According to thy mercy, remember thou me for thy goodness sake, O Lord. Good and upright is the Lord. Therefore, we lead teach sinners in the way. Oh my. Precious brother, may God richly bless you. You know, we can continue, continue, continue. It's just, you know, we, we must thank the Lord because we are among the little flock by his grace, to have found, to be able to find the way. I would like to show you a scripture in the book of uh, <clears throat> Romans chapter 13. Yes, let us start from there as we are continuing. I will come back again to that scripture of Psalms 25. Romans chapter 13. Listen, brothers and sisters, 
Even those who are connected online, I'm, I'm just praising the Lord to see so many of you connected online right now. And uh, the Lord really bless all of you for your prayers. Yes. Romans chapter 13. Shall we read verse 11? Listen to what the Bible says. Romans chapter 13. Yes, I like the Bible to find okay, yes. Romans chapter 13 from verse 11. Listen to what the Bible is saying. Yes. <clears throat> and that knowing the time, we must know the time, that now it is high time to awake after sleep. For now is our salvation nearer than when we believed. Verse 12. The night is far spent. The day is at hand. Let us therefore cast off the works of darkness. And let us put on the armor of light. Verse 13. Let us walk honestly as in the day, not in rioting and darkness, not in chambering and wantonness, not in strife and heavy, but put ye on the Lord Jesus Christ and make not provision for the flesh to fulfill the last day of. Listen, brethren. Time, of course, as we are reading, I can say this scripture is fulfilled today. Paul wrote about this scripture, but we can read this scripture and see with our eyes that for sure time is fast spent. Listen, brethren, as the brother was reading for us from Psalms 25, there is a scripture there, I think verse 6 or 7, where the Bible says, Remember not my sins of old. Yes. The sins that we committed during our ignorance, of course, we repented. Our God, the one that we trust, has forgiven us. But please, we shouldn't go back to the things that were keeping us prisoners. We, we met the truth, and the truth has set us free. Let us not go back to be prisoners. In those things, as the Bible says here, we must cast off the works of darkness. You know, it is a shame sometimes to hear that, uh, you know, within uh, the brethren, uh, you know, people are fighting, murmuring, and whatsoever, whatsoever. It's wrong. Those things are part of the things of darkness. You will hear that, you know, in such city, in such country, you know, the brethren, you know, they couldn't, uh, you know, agree anymore. And then they decide to split. But listen, if here on earth, he, he, I'm quoting now Brother Frank from Germany, Krefeld. He always tell us, if here on earth we can't eat the same Lord's Supper, if we can't be together here on earth, how can we, how can we be one in heaven? When we read the book of Acts chapter 2, you start from verse 1, you will see 
The Bible is talking, they were in one place, in one accord. If truly, Ephesians chapter 4, verse 4, where the Bible says, one Lord, one Spirit, everything one, one, one. I don't see how brethren should fight when all of them are led by the very same Holy Spirit. Then there must be something wrong somewhere. Listen, brothers and sisters, I don't know why I must put it today this way. The Bible says, let us therefore cast off the works of darkness. Why? The night is far spent. The day is at hand. Listen, if in your heart you have hatred, jealousy, whatsoever you can name it, you know that list of uh, the things of darkness you can read in Galatians chapter 5, you know, toward the end. You will see the works of darkness. You will see in 1 Corinthians chapter 6 from verse 9, you will see the works of darkness. I don't have time to read them now. But if those things are found in your heart, how can you expect to be raptured? Do you think Jesus Christ to take to heaven someone full of hatred? No. He's the one who says, be ye holy because I am holy. It's only holiness that will go up there. That's why the word of God must come in this way to clean us from all the dirty things of the world. Because the Bible says, when he comes, we shall be like him. You mean in Jesus Christ, hatred, fornication, adultery, drunkenness, whatsoever you can name it? No. Time is fast spent. We shouldn't just be a song. We believe the message. We believe the message. But when people look unto you, they don't see the Bible. Because the message is nothing else but the Bible. Listen, my precious brothers and sisters, I beg you. Maybe let us read Hebrews chapter 10. Hebrews chapter 10. I would like to start from uh, Hebrews chapter 10, from verse 14. If you have time, read the whole chapter when you are at home. Hebrews chapter 10, from verse 14. For by one offering, he had perfected forever them that are sanctified. Hallelujah! By one offering, the work done on the cross of Calvary, the blood that was shed on the cross of Calvary, the Lord perfected forever them that are sanctified. Listen, this is very important. 15. Whereof the Holy Ghost also is a witness to us, for after that he had said before, listen to verse 16, this is the covenant that I will make with them after those days, saith the Lord. Listen, don't miss this part. I will put my laws into their heart, and in their mind will I write them. Listen, brothers and sisters, the one who doing everything here, who is perfecting us forever, is the Lord. And the one who, has, who is writing in our hearts everything and in our minds is the Lord. 
You will see it also in Ezekiel chapter 36. Listen, brothers and sisters, as we always read in Ephesians chapter 1 verse 13, He must seal us. God cannot seal false doctrines. God cannot see someone whose heart is full of the works of darkness. That's why I'm praising the Lord for the scripture of exhortation. The Lord is calling because the one who must teach us the truth. Because if you have never received the truth, you won't be free. And when the Lord, the Son of Man, has made you free, you are free indeed. Oh my, I will continue. Now can you even read verse 17? And their sins and iniquities will I remember no more. Hallelujah! We see where we are standing. So as I'm standing here with all my brethren here, even those who are following us online, the Creator, our Heavenly Father, cannot remember our sins, cannot remember our iniquity. That's why we trust Him. And for sure, he won't allow a single one of us to be ashamed. Never. Forget about it. Now listen. 18. Now, where remission of this is, there is no more offering for sin. Hallelujah. Because it was already once done. In the Old Testament, they used to give, you know, people has to go with a lamb once a year. We can't do it anymore because the Lord has already done it once. And when we are in Him, there is no need for me to come for offering for sins. He has already done it. What I have to do is just to believe it. And enjoy it. <laughs> Hallelujah. I'm saying enjoy it. Yes. I'm, I'm happy when the brethren are, are screaming at me like that. May God bless you. Listen. Now when we continue. Verse 19. Having therefore brethren. Boldness. Just imagine. Boldness to enter into the holiest by the blood of Jesus. Remember, in the Old Testament, the high priest, it was a big mission for them to enter in that holiest because if there was something wrong in, in them, he was dead. But now, we can enter in the holiest. With what? By the blood. By the blood of Jesus which was offered once for all, for all of us. Hallelujah. Listen. Now, verse 20. By a new and living way, which he had consecrated for us. Not for himself. He did it for us. Through the veil, that is to say, his flesh. Oh my God. And having an high priest over the house of God. Now listen, verse 22. Let us draw near with a true heart in full assurance of faith. Having our heart sprinkled from an evil conscience and our bodies washed with pure water. I like it. Now when we continue verse 23. Let us hold fast the profession of our faith without wavering. For he is faithful that promised. 
Listen, brothers, sisters, we are not of those who are like taking chance, say maybe, maybe, with our God, there is no maybe. When he promises, it must come to pass. <coughs> oh, my. Now, listen, brethren. And let us consider one another to provoke unto love and to good works. That's why, brethren, you know, I always praise the Lord with this little flock here in Maryborough. You know, when we meet, it's just, uh, you know, we are a family. And I love it. May God bless you. And uh, I'm, I'm praying for it to continue that way. You know? Not forsaking the assembling of ourselves together as the man of some is, but exhorting one another. And so much the more as you see the day approaching. As we read in Romans chapter 13, the day, you know, it's, so the day is at hand. The day is at hand. And listen, brothers and sisters. Oof. I don't want to read verse 26, but I must read it. For if we sin willfully, after that we have received the knowledge of the truth, there remaineth no more sacrifice for sins. That's a big, terrible warning. I would like us to read now uh, Hebrews chapter 10. <clears throat> I would like to start from verse 35. Listen. Cast not away therefore your confidence, which had great recompense of rewards. Listen, brethren, what we have believed. What the, Lord has ex what the Lord has kept for us. The Bible is calling it <clears throat> great recompense of rewards waiting for you and me in heaven. That's why 36, the Bible says, for ye have need of patience that after ye have done the will of God, ye might receive the promise Listen, brothers, listen, sisters, I beg you. Are you aware that John the Baptist preached for almost six months? The whole ministry of John the Baptist, it was almost for six months. The whole ministry of our Lord Jesus Christ was between two and a half and three years. But the Lord... <clears throat> Wanted to make sure as was going up to send unto you and me the Holy Spirit. We may say yes. <clears throat> the Lord preached for almost three years. But the Holy Spirit is still himself. <laughs> I love it. <clears throat> the Holy Spirit is Jesus Christ himself. He has never forsaken us. He is with us. When he was with, when the disciples could see him, of course it was for almost two and a half and three years. He went to prepare the place, do everything. <clears throat> At the same time, to make sure that everything must be done according to his perfect will, he left unto us the teacher, the comforter. And that teacher, comforter, is himself. So, since he went up, he is still with us. And when he says, Come unto me. It's not for anyone to come and meet a minister standing behind the pupil. No. It's to meet Jesus Christ. Why? He wants to show to each one of us his right way. 
His right pathway is truth. Why? He must have people that must be small Christ. Are we aware that Christ means the anointed ones? So when we say we are Christians, in other words, we are the anointed ones. You and I, we don't know the way. He is the way. So, he is in front, showing us what we must do. And, of course, as the Bible says, the Lord is not slack when it comes to his promises. Oh, yes, I must read it. James, <clears throat> James, James chapter 5, I must read it. James chapter 5, I will start from verse 7. James chapter 5, from verse 7. <clears throat> Listen, brothers and sisters. Verse 7, the Bible says, Be patient, therefore, brethren, unto the coming of the Lord. You tell me, Yes, you have been singing the same song. I will tell you, yes. I will keep on singing that song until the day when we shall be taken. We must just be patient. And the Bible continues, Behold, the husband man waited for the precious fruit of the earth, and had long patience for it until he received the early and later rain. Verse 8. Be ye also patient. Establish your heart for the coming of the Lord draweth nigh. When you read Revelation chapter 22, more than three times the Lord is saying, I'm coming quickly. Can you imagine? One day unto our Lord is like a thousand years. The one who promised will fulfill his promise. I will continue. <clears throat> I would like to jump. Verse 11. Behold. Why am I jumping? Okay, yes. If you have time, as I say, you can read the whole chapter. Verse 11. Behold, we count them happy which endure. Ye have heard of the patience of Job, and have seen the ends of the Lord. And the Lord is very pitiful and of tender mercy. Oh my. Second Peter chapter 3. Second Peter chapter 3. <clears throat> I'll start from verse 2. No, I start from verse 1. Sorry, sorry, sorry. Yes, Second Peter chapter 3, from verse 1. The second epistle, beloved, I now write unto you, in both which I stir up your pure mind by way of remembrance. So what we are doing now today, we are just reminding one another. Don't think when we are going to meet, gathering, we are going to read something which is new, I mean, outside of the Bible. We shall keep on just reading the Bible, reminding one another, exhorting one another. Verse 2. That ye may be mindful of the word which was spoken before by the holy prophet, and <clears throat> of the commandment of us, the apostles of the Lord and Savior, knowing this first, 
that they shall come in the last days, scoffers, walking after their own lust, and saying, where is the promise of his coming? For since the fathers fell asleep, all these, all things continue as they were from the beginning of the creation. Verse 5. For this, they willingly are ignorant of that by the word of God, the heavens were of old, and the earth standing out of the water and in the water. Verse 6. Whereby the world that then was being overflowed with water perished. Oof. I'll continue. Verse 7. Oof. I, I, I don't know if uh, we shall say amen to this scripture also. But the heavens and the earth which are now by the same word are kept in store reserved unto fire against the day of judgment and perdition of ungodly men. Listen brothers and sisters when we shall be taken out of this world the ungodly men as Malachi chapter 4 verse 1 makes so it clear, they will be burned. I don't wish to see any one of us to miss what the Lord has prepared for us. Now when we continue verse 8, but beloved, beloved, be not ignorant of this one thing, that one day is with the Lord as a thousand years, and a thousand years as one day. Verse 9. The Lord is not slack concerning his promise, as some men count slackness, but is long-suffering to us, word, not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. That's why even when we're reading from Romans chapter 13, we must come out of all the works of darkness. I don't know why the Lord must use us in this way. I don't know. I must be honest with you. Shall I continue? Hmm. Verse 10. But the day of the Lord will come as a thief in the night, in the which the heaven shall pass away with a great noise, and the elements shall melt with fervent heat, the earth also, and the works that are therein shall be burnt up. Seeing then <clears throat> that all these things should be dissolved, what manner of person ought ye to be in all holy conversation and goodness? Listen, brethren, the Bible is reminding us we must do our best by God's grace to remain holy. God will never take a single confusion to heaven. Brothers, sisters, I'm telling you, if you have to hear about some of the doctrines that some are preaching, you just shake your head to say, where did they get it from? Or where did they get them from? And funny enough, they have followers. Oh my. For instance, let me tell you, First Thessalonians chapter 4. The scripture known to all of us, but uh, today I will read it again. First Thessalonians chapter 4, <clears throat> from verse 13. But I will not have you to be ignorant, brethren, concerning them which are asleep, that ye sorrow not, even as others which have no hope. 
For if we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so them also which sleep in Jesus will God bring with him. Now listen from verse 15. For this, for this we say unto you by the word of the Lord that we which are alive and remain unto the coming of the Lord shall not prevent them which are asleep. For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of the archangel, and with the trump of God, and the dead in Christ shall rise first. 17. Then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air, and so shall we ever be with the Lord. Wherefore come one another with these words. I say amen to this scripture. Now can I shock you today? There are groups of believers. According to them, this scripture has already taken place. Listen brothers, listen sisters. I met those groups for the first time when I was still in Zambia, it was in 1993. I couldn't believe it. I was, you know, we were having a meal. And then I just saw that brother telling me, brother, I must tell you something. This is a revelation. I said, oh, okay. A revelation. What is that revelation? I say, you know, as you look at me now, I'm already raptured. I say, uh, oh, you, you already raptured. I say, yes, I'm already raptured. I say, but brother, where did you get it from? I say, no, it is a revelation. Oh, I say, okay, but that revelation must be according to the scriptures. Because the Bible says, when this scripture will take place, we shall be caught up and meet the Lord in the air. So when that scripture will take place, you won't see me here on earth. And I remember before we start eating, that brother was complaining of, uh, because he, he wanted some money. He said, look here, when I'll be taken, issues of money, it, it won't exist. Because I will be with my Lord. Can you imagine, brethren? What I'm telling you today, people still fighting for uh, daily, you know, survival, you know, in life. They must work hard, they must do this, they must do that. They go to school, they do this. But they believe that they have already been raptured. You see, brothers and sisters, I beg you, if we don't hear from God, oh yes, I must read one scripture. I see it passing this way. Isaiah chapter 55, verse 3. Yes, I must read Isaiah chapter 55. Yes, verse 3. Oh my, I love it. Listen, brothers and sisters, as I'm about to close for today. No, no, no. Listen. Isaiah 55, verse 3. Listen to what the Bible says. Incline your ear and come unto me. Here and your soul shall live. Listen, brothers and sisters, who is speaking here? It's God. Actually, bear with me. I'm going to start from verse 1. Isaiah 55 from verse 1. Oh, everyone that thirsteth, come ye to the waters, and he that had no money, I like it, come ye, buy and eat. 
The one who is calling us is God. He's coming, you know, he's calling us to come and buy and eat without money. Yes, Brother Gary, I see you are surprised. Yes, God is calling us to come and eat without money. Now listen. Come ye, buy and eat. <clears throat> yea, come, buy wine and milk without money and without price. What a wonderful God. Now listen to this too. Wherefore do ye spend money for that which is not bread? And you labor for that which satisfieth not. He came diligently unto me. How many children of God are fulfilling this scripture? I mean to hearken diligently unto our Lord. Now the question is, who is the one that you are hearing from? That's the difference. Because the devil is also a preacher. As I'm telling you, someone, you know, with uh, degrees from universities telling me I'm already raptured. I tell him, brother, you must be mad. When our Lord Jesus Christ was raptured, the disciples saw him going. And when we read the book of Acts chapter 1, you know, they said, the very same Jesus that you saw going, he will come the same manner. When Elisha saw Elijah taken, he saw him going. Listen, brothers and sisters. Now, let me continue as I was reading here. He came diligently unto me, and he and eat ye that which is good. And let your soul delight itself in fatness. Verse 3. Incline your ear. God wants our ear to incline to him. That's why when you go to Revelation chapter 2, Revelation chapter 3, the Bible is talking, oh, maybe let me read it as I, no, don't miss, don't close that one. I will just read. The Bible says, He that had him here, let him hear what the Spirit saith unto the churches. That's why in Isaiah 55, the Bible telling us, verse 3, Incline your ear and come unto me. That's why he's calling us in Matthew chapter 11, verse 28. We must come, we must go to Jesus. Did you notice that each time when we are sharing the word of God, we are pointing each one of us to Jesus, even myself. Jesus, 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 Jesus. Because he's everything for me. He's everything to each one of us. Without Jesus, we are nothing. As we were coming, I was telling my precious brother Steve, I said, oh my. As we were driving, I could see cars in front of us driving even faster because they had to go to a certain church here. And I could see the way they were entering. We were invited once with my wife, you know, because we had to meet the one that they were calling senior pastor. But uh, what we saw, it was just a disaster. Now, when I see everyone going, I say, oh my God, if these people, poor souls, could know exactly that uh, they are going to a place where Matthew 23, 
is going to be fulfilled, they will make them twice children of hell. Yes, brother. People leaving their homes, being honest, carrying their Bibles, they go to a place they, they call church, but those who are preaching unto them, themselves cannot enter, and they are blocking the way for those who are hearing them to enter. Jesus Christ says, those people, themselves are blind, leading other blind. Jesus Christ saying, those people, each time when they are going, they are making them two times children of hell. You know, to some of us, when we look at so God, I wish we could be given something to go and shake all these people. But, yeah, as we keep on saying, everyone is free. Yes, you are free to believe whatsoever you believe. But unto us, with our ear, we must hear what the Holy Spirit is telling us. Because the Holy Spirit is Jesus Christ himself. The Holy Spirit is still preaching. And remember, the Lord Jesus Christ said, if you have a problem with the Holy Spirit, you want to be forgiven in this world and in, in the world to come, so the Holy Spirit is using people like some of us, full of mistakes, sharing the word of God. As I keep on saying, Mary borrow. You don't have an excuse. As we are standing, we are not after your money. Isaiah 55 is mentioning it. We are not after your money. Something is about to take place. Come to Jesus. If it comes to a time when they have to put you in a coffin, if you have never met Jesus, your pastors can pray. They can fast. They can dance in spirits. They can uh, do whatsoever they wish. As usual, they will say good words at your funeral. But I'm promising you, without Jesus, when they, actually before even they can put you in that coffin, you are already in hell. I'm not trying to scare anyone, but I must tell the truth. We are not preaching for us to be famous, no. Jesus must be famous. We are not preaching for us to be known. Jesus Christ must be known. We are not preaching for you to come and meet us. We are preaching for you, each one of us, to meet Jesus Christ. And the most bad news for you will be the day of judgment. You will hear this voice. And the Lord will be telling you, yes, yes, you knew him as a doctor. But he was my servant. Listen, brothers and sisters, I don't know why I'm, I must put things this way. It might be like a threatening messages, but it's not a threat. I must tell the truth, because if I don't bring the truth, I will be the one to answer. I don't want the blood of anyone, when you read Ezekiel 33, yes, I don't want the blood of anyone to be upon me. I must tell the truth. If you reject the truth, 
You are, no, you are not rejecting me. You are rejecting God. And the very same God wants to take you from, you know, away from the very soon destruction that is coming. We may say, yes, we have a good country. Yes, I can promise you Australia is a beautiful country with uh, many places that you can go and uh, visit and so forth. I see most of my colleagues Saturday, Sundays like this. They are on the beaches, you know. There are so many things, you know, in, in Australia that you can enjoy. But I'm promising you, when that time will come, Australia will be destroyed. What we see, the fire left and right, you know, it will be burning, it will be burnt completely according to the scriptures. The same applies to the USA, Canada, Europe, whatsoever. God wants to take his bride out of this world before destroying everything. That's why when you go to Revelation, John will tell you, I saw the new earth and new heaven. Because the first ones were destroyed. Only one place of safety, Jesus Christ. We must be found in Jesus Christ. Oh my, my time is gone. Listen, brothers and sisters, we must incline our ear and come to Jesus. In closing, I must finish Hebrews chapter 10 because uh, I wanted to uh, let me read the last two scriptures in Hebrews chapter 10 and then uh, we shall pray. Hebrews chapter 10 <clears throat> verse 37 Listen what the Bible says in closing verse 37 For yet a little while and he that shall come will come and will not tarry. Remember Habakkuk chapter 2 from verse 2 to 4. Even if it tarries, wait for it. But the one who promised to come, surely he will come. Verse 38. Now the just shall live by faith. But if any man draw back, my soul shall have no pleasure in him. Oh, brothers and sisters, I beg you, time is far spent. The day is approaching. Our Lord can come at any time. Please, I beg you, don't draw back. Because if you draw back, the soul of our God shall not have pleasure in you. I don't want any one of us to be found in that category. Of course, 39, the Bible says, But we are not of them who draw back unto perdition, but of them that believe to the saving of the soul. Hallelujah. We are in a race. Listen, brothers and sisters. We are in a race, as the Bible says in Hebrews chapter 12, from verse 1 to 2. And now in that race, we must keep on, uh, you know, running, looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith. I know the bride of Jesus Christ all over the earth is going through many, many challenges. Brother Frank from Crefeld also mentioned it more than once. Do you know why? The devil knows us. He will come and bring a lot of problems. 
trying to make us feel as if, uh, you know, we are not uh, children of God. Sometimes you might even feel like God has forsaken you or forsaken us, but God will never forsake us. As long as his word is here, as long as we are obedient children, let us be patient. The devil will never defeat our God. What we have to do is to remind the Lord the battle that we are going through. For sure, very soon, the redemption of this body is going to take place. And please, don't waste your time, don't waste your time listening to sermons if you are not sure of the one who is preaching. That's why today we have people who believe that they have already been raptured. We say, brother, how can you tell me that you are raptured? Say, brother, you don't understand it is revelation. Say, which, which, which kind of revelation? Because the revelation must fit with the Bible. When we shall be raptured, we won't complain of the heat anymore. It's like now we have to put the aircon, the fans, because it's just too hot. But at least, but when we shall be raptured, no more issue of tax. <laughs> No issues of uh, diseases. We, you know, oh brother, can you prescribe for me this because I'm having headaches? No. They, you know, brothers, sisters, I've been promising, but uh, the Lord must help me to put it as a sermon. Just to have an idea of what we are going to experience when we shall be in heaven. And that is what the devil doesn't want us to, to, to experience. Wonderful things kept for you and me. Not kept for the angels, kept for you and me. Please, I beg you, shall we stand for the word of prayer? Precious Heavenly Father, Yes, under the precious blood which was shed on the cross of Calvary, this day, once more, I bring unto thee all thy brides scattered all over the earth. Help us, Father, just to hear from thee, not to be involved in the works of darkness. Help each one of us, Father, to work honestly because we are the children of light you are the light you are in us therefore we must reflect the light which is in us oh heavenly father you know exactly what we are experiencing for this end of the end time we know we can see that at any time the return of our Lord Jesus Christ will be effective. And of course, when you come, you are not going to put your feet here on earth. We shall meet you in the air and we shall be taken. We shall be on the clouds. Oh, Heavenly Father, help my brother, help my sister, help all of us to receive such wonderful news. Oh, Heavenly Father, be the after speaker. Be with us. If it is thy will for us to meet again next week, we shall just praise thee. We know outside there, the enemy is waiting to see how he will fight more. But uh, we don't care with uh, all those kind of battles because we are more than overcomers with you 
We can't be defeated. We can't be ashamed. Oh, thank you, Father. We just surrender everything unto thee. In Jesus Christ's name, we have prayed. Amen. We shall sing the last song from our song books. Song number 42. Song number 42. You know, brethren, as I was sharing the word, the atmosphere among us, I'm praising God and it should continue like that. That is exactly how the first disciples were living. Read the book of Acts chapter 2. Read, you'll see. Life among the brethren. Yes. That's what we are experiencing here, as small as we are. Psalm 42, Jesus the light. <clears throat> Holy ye saint of light, proclaim Jesus the light of the world. Life and mercy in his name, Jesus the light of the world. We walk in the light. Beautiful, beautiful light, come when the dewdrops of mercy are bright, shine all around us by day and by night, Jesus, the light of the world, yeah, the Savior in his call, Jesus, the light of the world. Send the gospel truth to all, Jesus, the light of the world. We walk in the light, beautiful, beautiful light. Come when the dewdrops of mercy are bright, shine all around us by day and by night. Jesus, the light of the world, why not seek him then today? Jesus, the light of the world, go with truth the narrow way. Jesus, the light of the world, we walk in the light beautiful. Beautiful light, come when the dewdrops of mercy are bright. Shine all around us by day and by night. Jesus, the light of the world, come confess him as your king. Jesus, the light of the world. Then the bells of heaven will ring, Jesus, the light of the world. We walk in the light, beautiful, beautiful light. Come when the dewdrops of mercy are bright, shine all around us by day and by night. Jesus, the light of the world. Amen. Amen. May God richly bless you. Amen.